All right, so we back with an interview, interviewing a, a new artist, a new up and coming artist today. Go by the name of JB. He got a YouTube channel. He been growing his YouTube channel. Uh, you can look it up on YouTube at JB. Which if y'all watching this, y'all probably on his channel already. Um, but he got a couple <coughs> videos out. He been really being consistent and, and grinding and trying to grow his fan base. Um, so today we're gonna get to know him a little bit more and, and get a little detail into his life and how he got into music and, and you know what inspired him. Um, so I appreciate him for rocking with me though. He's been rocking with me real, real tough lately yes, and um we're gonna we're gonna keep trying to you know take it up take it up to another <coughs> notch so let's start off though um with where you get the name jb from uh i got the name jb from shit my name my name juan bradford so i couldn't think of a name like to come up with at the time because like me starting rapping was just like impulsive as hell so i was like shit i need a name my name's Ron Bradford, JB. J A Y B. That fit though, that feel like for a nickname for sure. Right. <clears throat> so wh where you grow up at? I grew up on the South first. I stayed on Peck Street for like some years, probably like four or five years. But I was born I was born in Woodcliffe though. That's where I was born and that's where I was born. You lived in Muskegon all your life? Yo, oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So alright, that was gonna be the next question, what area you grew up in, but you just explained that, so how was it growing up as a kid? Shit, was not easy. Um, but I think my mama though, cause she she really made it easier than it should have been. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a lot of stuff that she hid from me that that I, a kid wasn't supposed to see, and I'm glad, cause I probably don't even know the worst of, of how how growing up for me was. But it wasn't easy. Mama was struggling. Pops wasn't around that much. To both my parents convicted felons couldn't get a job money was tough it it, it wasn't easy but it, it's gonna get better though i think and i think that's how we all look at it you know our parents we we, we thank them as we get older like because they kept a lot of stuff from us that we probably weren't ready for anyway to, to, to know about a, a seat for sure i remember i remember i was i was homeless i stayed in a homeless shelter my mama she worked uh third shift so me and my sister go to bed for school and it was a bunk bed so me and my sister slept in the top bunk my mama slept in the bottom bunk in the shelter i almost couldn't even stay with them because i was a boy and you know they got the gender separated shelter so they was gonna remove me from from my from my family and that's all i knew i was gonna have to go by myself but for some reason they let me stay there so i know you like man thank god because i probably lost my mind and that's for real like but did y'all have to stay in there for like a long time or it was just like a short period of time? Probably like a month. Yeah. We stayed up in there for like a month. But we, my mama, she, my mama a grinder for real. That's how, that's why I get my hustle from. She, she got a, she got us up out of there. Man, I know you was thankful. Yeah, for real. Did you have a lot of friends growing up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends on what you define. There's a lot of friends. I, I feel like I had a lot of people I was cool with, like, that I would talk to, say what's up to, feel me, see at, see them at a party, I'm chilling with them, stuff like that. Yeah. But a lot of friends, I really been with the same dogs my, my whole life. Like I knew Trey since I was a little, little nigga. I met Lakeith in middle school, but like I said, like these these been my dogs my whole life. We missing a nigga, he coming here on his way. But like it's just been me and them. Same For group real. of friends. For real. What type of friend would you say you is like to them? Yeah. Um. You know, like, is you loyal? Is you gonna ride for your dogs? Uh, uh, you, you support them? Or just, you know, what kind of friend would you say? I say we not even, we not even friends. We like brothers, for real. Like, we done went through, we done went through real brother shit. Like, and to, to them, I feel like they see me as, like, probably a little brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I close They probably you. see me as a little brother. Because, you feel me, I'm always the one fucking up, getting in some shit, getting in some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> like and they gotta look out for me so shit like they probably do see me as the little brother <laughs> Man. they probably do That's how, I on yeah. how many siblings do you got i got two two sisters uh both older so i'm the only boy and the baby people think i was spoiled i'm not 
It's not work. Don't work like that. Hey, hey, <laughs> they be swearing. Just because your mama cared about you, they be swearing you spoiled. Though. Like, right. That's how it was, though. You feel me? I wouldn't say I went through the most. I didn't go through the most struggles growing up. My, at least my mama didn't show it. She was struggling. Like right. she made it happen. You yeah, feel yeah. me? Whatever we needed, she 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 made sure we got. So you say you got two old. <laughs> what were some struggles you had to overcome growing up? Some struggles I had to overcome growing up. Yeah. Me, so a lot of people know like I went to Mona Shores. So like when I come from like not having nothing and I I just see privilege all around me and like shores like a, it ain't just a, a rich school, but like it's people there with more money. You yeah, feel me? they got money. Yeah. They families got money. So like growing up around that, I kinda that was a big struggle for me. I grew up with a lot of insecurities that like a little kid like me shouldn't have had. Like I was wearing the same clothes, uh, you know, all, all, all my friends doing stuff, going to field trips, doing all this, but I shoot, we couldn't afford that. Like, I don't know, like, it, it instilled some of me though, because I could have took it one of two ways. I could have been bitter, like I ain't got nothing, or I could have, shoot, make something of myself. So that's really what I took from having all that privilege around me without having it myself, mm -hmm. is I see it now. So I know it's out there. I can get it. I can go get it. You feel me? If I, I feel like if I wasn't around that, what all I saw, I would have thought that's all I can get. But I didn't, I didn't been to parties or people houses, three, yeah. three houses into one. You know what I mean? So like, I know it's out there. I know that I can get it. So I'm gonna go get it. Sure. And, and that's why you gotta, you know, be grateful for even going to that school because. You got to see stuff like you said. You got to make friends. It's alright to make different kind of friends, like you said, and see different kind of things, and 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 just experience a lot of that stuff. And you, like you said, if you go to a, a, a public school or you know something like Muskegon, you ain't gonna get to see all that. You ain't gonna get to meet them different kind of people or see mo people with more money. And it and made stuff. me. It really made me know how to how to talk to people yeah. not the same as me. And that's a skill that a lot of people don't have. Don't have. Like you gotta learn how to talk to certain people, you do. and I feel like doing going through that, being in that situation, I learn how to interact with different type of people. I feel like that's gonna help me in life for sure. No, you need that because you never know you might get in a, a, a business meeting or for a record label. You gotta know how to talk to them people. You can't talk to them how you talk to your friends and stuff like that. Right. People don't know that's a skill you need. They they think it's being fake, but it's not being fake. It's just knowing how to talk, like, right? You know, to different people. So I agree. Did you grow up with both parents? Nah, and like judging by my music, you would probably think my daddy. I never seen my daddy in life, mm -hmm. but that ain't true. Like my daddy was around. It's just like shit. Shit happened. Like I ain't even gonna. He, he I ain't even gonna reflect on all that. But he, you know, we he trying to do better. So so like kind of he was like, in and out basically. Yeah, in and out, not consistent for real. I think that's how most of our parents, you know, or our pops is. So I can say I, I definitely can relate. You know, so. I don't know, it's just something we had to go through, and, and, and our pimp mamas, you know, taught us more as a, as a man, you know, like, it's just stuff we had to go through, man, I definitely feel it on that one. Yeah, my mama, she was, she was shit, my mama is my person for sure. She was holding it down. Yeah, like, she that one. She always been her. I ain't, I can always depend on her with anything. Have you had people say you were spoiled, or you grew up spoiled, or you, you not from the hood, or like, have you had to go through that? Um, I ain't really heard so much that I get up spoiled. It's just stereotypes, you feel me, that, oh, he went to Shores, he, he ain't really with all that, or he ain't, but really, you feel me, like, that shit, that shit, I feel like that shit just bogus as hell, because you feel me, I went to Shores, but you wouldn't think, you wouldn't think about it the way I, I really did grow up, like, yeah. you wouldn't, you wouldn't. They you didn't wouldn't, see all that, they didn't right? see that part. They just see me. Walking in Mona Shores High School doors, going to class, you feel me? But I, I, I'm from the Heights originally, but I moved downtown. But my mama, we never really had to stay. We probably stayed in the hood, but it wasn't bad in the Heights at that time. Right, you see, you him, we walk. right, we right outside the hood, mm -hmm. literally. Yeah, you but. walk to the next, <laughs> you walk over there, you in the hood, you but know. Shit, so. Yeah, I've been living here for like a couple years now, so we, we, yeah, I ain't in the hood for sure. So. I could say I ain't grew up really in the hood. I did start off, but it wasn't bad in the Heights how it was, so. Yeah. Have you ever lost someone close in your life? Uh, it could be death. It could be. It, I really want to say death, though. Like, have you ever lost someone close to you? I lost people that 
I was close to somebody who lost somebody very close to them. And that affected me because I was close to that person. So, like, I ain't never really lost nobody personally that I, like, really love that dearest. Mm -hmm. But you've um, seen it happen to somebody close to you. Yeah, and that, that can affect, like, me, like, my friend. You know, his pops died. I had, a, I had a friend. He died from cancer. So, you feel me? And I wasn't really, like, close with him, but we was all in the same friend group. And I seen people that I cared about affected by, you feel me, that, so... Yeah, that makes sense though, cause I, I can honestly say too, I ain't never had nobody close to me pass away, so yeah. I ain't never experienced that. Um, so, and you gotta be grateful for that though, cause yeah, it do it affects. It's a blessing for yeah, sure. sure. Um, do you have somebody special in your life? Do I have somebody special in my life? Yeah, I got a girl. <laughs> I got a girl. I love her, man. She my dog. Like, how long y'all been together? A year and. Four months. Man, I, I would have thought it would been five. Y'all, y'all got that bond for sure. Yeah, like she, she like helped me. I remember one time, like this is when I really realized, like she opened up a whole different mindset for me. Like I, I was, I'll be, i be stressed out because with music and shit, I'll be so stressed out and going overthinking and in doubt and all this. So I was like, man, I told her, I was like, sometimes I just wish, like, I wanted to do something normal. So I wasn't so stressed out all the time. Like, cause, mm -hmm. you feel me? I'm not a dummy. Like, I, you feel me? I finished school with a high GPA. I, I go to college. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So I can go to school if I want to do, I can do anything that I want to within school. You feel me? So I was like, I, was just, I just wish I wanted to do something normal. Like, go to school, just get my degree, get a Go get a job, something easy, so I ain't just gotta worry about all this. Right. Like I wish I ain't want to do music, cause it's it's not guaranteed. No matter how good you is, it's not guaranteed. So, and she was like, Joan, you know how many people that wish they could write a song that can't write a song? Fact. And you complaining that you feel me? How and many people? Actually, and I'm like, I looked at, it, I'm like, No, you you think of it? Makes you think <laughs> like deep. she didn't change like. And she do stuff like that, and then that's why that's why I mess with her for sure. No, nah, you do. You it, it be it, it's not a guarantee, but life is all about risk. I feel like, and life is all about chasing something you love to do. And I feel like it's that's if that's your peace from the world, you gotta. I, I wouldn't stop even if I ain't make a dime from it. Right. If that's my peace from the world, if I go in there and I feel like I don't think about nothing else, I'm gonna do it. You know. And and it's people weird. There's people that's rapping that probably can't even afford to pay for videos, so right. or pay for studio time, so. Right. It do it make you think differently and and that's good that she 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 put that in your mind so it sounds like she make a big impact on your life oh yeah for sure it sound like do Man, you she fuck with my music so. <laughs> hey that's what it's all about <laughs> that shit could. do you ever see yourself getting married and having children uh, i mean right now i don't really i can't tell i mean i want kids one day i yeah. want to get married yeah i don't like no, of course not right now, but <laughs> you still got a lot of life left like, ahead. Like, but I'm um, saying, in your future, do you see that? Yeah. You see yeah. marriage and having kids. Yeah. All right. I feel like that's the goal. Okay. Okay. He said not. Not right now. <laughs> hey, that's what you got to say. Um, I like like I said, we already touched up that you got a a, a couple um close friends, but it's like, of course, everybody always see you got the same friends in your in your video and it's just like so that just telling me y'all very close like, oh yeah it's usually you see the same group of friends in your video these my brothers so sure. you say they support you they support everything you doing oh yeah even if they don't agree like they want to hear me make make all that detroit <laughs> shit talking shit and shit i'm like yeah. bro i'm like i mean i could hop on that type of time but that just ain't me like i want to make music like you feel me and they be man nah you gotta but even still i'll drop a song you and switch me? it up Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I might it might not be what they want to hear, but they'll still post. They'll still be in the video. And that's real. Yeah, like I know, so that's cool. So I'm gonna have to give them what they want one of these times. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's alright to switch up and show them. You can switch it up for sure. Um, how do it feel having a group of friends to support and what you're doing? Man, it's a blessing, bro. I can, I tell you, they they believe in me just as much as I believe in me. Like. Lakeith's right here Always sending me stuff Like on Instagram Hey you see this You Some see this motivating. Get up in this Or or, or, or uh, Man he just all, all all types of shit Like they be on there And they feel good Because it make me feel like That I can do it It make me feel like I'm good enough to do it And, and Shoot It When you got people behind you That you care about That believe in you It make you 
hungry. It make you want to go. It make you want to go get it. So you are you are. Some people don't got friends that supporting them like nothing and stuff they doing. Yeah. It's really like that out here though. So it is it's a blessing to have people behind you, especially your boys. Oh you yeah, know, sure. especially. How how did it feel watching that Kanye documentary? Like how did it? How did it? What Man, did it do to you? I can watch that back over and over and over and over again. Like I was, I was really moved by that by that documentary. I ain't gonna lie. Like I noticed a lot of similarities, like between me and him. Like these niggas, they they fuck with my music, but they they don't never ask me to play my music or rap. I'm always, hey, like I'm finna rap this song, and like <laughs> Kanye was always doing that in them videos. He was, hey, like, I'm finna rap y'all this, and they was listening to it, and they like vibing to it. Like I'm always rapping, like showing them some new songs I got, showing them some beats. Like he just confident. He was confident in himself, yeah. so confident no matter what. Even people called him cocky yes. or arrogant. And he predicted it. Like I, like in my music, you hear me say like I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna predict it because I really believe it. I really believe that that's that that's gonna happen. Like you got. So I want to speak it into existence. I believe in that 100. percent Whatever you say, whatever come out your mouth, that's you know. that can happen if you put in the work for it. Like facts, facts. Do you, do you ever see yourself? Because you see, he had to move out of his city to make it. Do you yeah. feel like you got to eventually move move away from your hometown? I don't want to. But yeah, the thought crossed my mind a couple times. Just because the, the music that's just jamming here, I don't make. So I got to go somewhere where my music is like messed with. You feel me? And that's not a good feeling for real. Like when you feel like you ain't getting that love from your city. But niggas going to catch on. <laughs> niggas going to catch on for sure. And, and that is. That's, that's, that's one of the hard parts. I feel like... Um, you got to go, you got to get the rest of the world to catch on before your city to catch on. They going to support you when they see everybody else supporting you. So right. you do got to sometimes leave home, go where they making music at and, and try to make it like, and that's the hard part. That, that's, that'll break you like, like it can make or break you. You don't want to leave home. You want to make it right here. But I know a couple artists, you know, the baby had to leave. Like he said he had to leave his hometown. But of course you build up a buzz and leave when you ready. But I feel like that too. I feel like, man, you could sometimes you gotta move away from home to make it. Right, for sure. Uh, so what schools did you attend? You said Mona Shores. Well, I went to Marquette when I was like a little little nigga, like kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and then I from ever since second grade, I uh I moved. I've been at Shores my whole life. Graduated from Shores. So yeah. What year did you graduate? Twenty twenty. Hey, shout out Shores, man. Shout out Shores. It was lit though, wasn't it? Like yeah. school was just, you feel like you wish you can go back sometime. Man, I miss high school. Man, you never realize for real till you get out like, damn. I used to say I couldn't wait to get out, but now I be yeah. like, damn, sometime I can't wait to go back. Hey, I these niggas right back. here got Shores, they first football ring. What? In history. What year was that? 2019, yeah. Ah, that's lit. Shores was going crazy around yeah, that time. Yeah. Yep, Shores, Catholic Century. There's a lot of schools going crazy. That's crazy. How did you get into music? How did I get into music? Man, so, okay, I'm going to start this. I'm going to start it off from the beginning. So, my daddy, like, I feel like when I say, like, music in my blood, like, I say that, like, music in me, like, I say that in songs all the time. I really mean that. Like, my daddy used to make music. And he was he was pretty, pretty big in the city back when he was rapping or whatever. But So, like, I feel like I got some of that talent from him. Like, my mama say when... When she was pregnant with me, my daddy a, a rap to me in, in her, in her, in, uh, while I was in her stomach and stuff. And when I when I was a baby and I was born, and I would cry, and she would turn on his music and I'd stop crying. Like, and I stopped crying probably because she was rapping to me. But my mama loved music too. Like, and I always, even when I was little, whenever I hit a beat, I feel it. But like, I I just feel it through my whole body. My friends tell me whenever they know whenever I'm in the car because they see they see this <laughs> they see me bobbing my head and stuff. Nah, for real, your mama like I said, your mama showed me a video you rapping when you was young, so you really been doing it like since yeah. you was like eight years old. I really old. just never took it serious. I just started taking it serious like six months ago, for real, six seven months ago. I got into music. I was on Facetime with my best friend, and she was like, uh, I was watching somebody music video on TV. Man, I can't remember, it was a couple years ago, but I mean, I can rap. I'm finna rap. She like, boy, you can't rap. <laughs> so like me, I love my thing. I love when people like tell me like I can't do something because it just, it make me want to do it. It make me want to see if I can do it. So like she told me I couldn't do it and I wrote, I wrote 
my first song, I looked up a type beat on YouTube. I don't even know what I looked up. It was probably a T Grizzly type beat or something. And I uh <coughs> I wrote a song and it was trash, but it was my first song. It was mm -hmm. like it was trash though. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you probably like that. <laughs> I won't never play that song again. Hey, but but like by the second or third song, like I was getting the hang of it. I was starting to like catch it. It was like it really came real natural to me. Like I never really was doing it for years. I really just picked up a pen and a pad and was like gonna try it out. And I'm just been going ever since. I had nine songs at first, then I had twenty songs, then I had thirty songs, and I was like, okay, I'm really going. Yeah. I see you say you just started taking it serious like six months ago. So like, how, how old is you now? I'm twenty years old. 20 years yeah i started rapping when i was 16 16 years old um went to my first studio session when i was 17. do you do you have a team behind you or is it just you like oh no i feel like i feel like i got a team behind me you feel me it's really not like a organized whole team that we but i got a studio that i go to i got a videographer whenever i need a video i'm getting one whenever i need a studio session i'm getting one Whenever I need my, my niggas, I'm, you feel me, for a video or something, it's there. Uh, mm -hmm. Only thing I feel like I don't got is probably like a marketing team. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only thing I really need is a marketing team. No, for real. <laughs> that, that's that's the key too, to marketing and getting yourself on the vlogs and stuff like that. Um, but no, that's, I, I would say that's a team. Like you said, you, you got a videographer, you got a, a, your niggas, you got somebody, you studio you go to. That's right. definitely a team. That's considered a team. <laughs> what future plans do you have uh, for your music? I want to go all the way. I want to go all the way. It ain't even a limit. I want to go as high as my, I know my music can take me. And that's a never ending. Like, like obviously, I have goals that I want. But, like, I want to blow past my goals. I want to surprise myself. Like, I know I got the potential to do it. So. Do you vision yourself doing shows and stuff and being on the road? Yeah, and Number one, number one, that's I'm telling you, you, like, that's my confident level right now is off the charts. Nah, that's what you do. You definitely got to manifest it. And I feel like it's all about networking and um, keeping good relationships, building good relationships. You feel me? Like, I feel like it, even, even being on social media, social media is a big part of today on how you can make it. But I feel like, like you said, commenting on other artists' videos, letting them know they fire. Like, it's, that's going to make them come to your page and check you out. Right. Um, figuring out how to get on Say Cheese or figuring out how to get on small blog sites and stuff like that. And uh, I feel like that's definitely the key is social media on how, how you can blow. Like, and, it, and, and it just takes one song. All it takes is one song. Now, and nowadays, it used to take, you know, a whole album or something like that. Right. But it could take one song for you to blow. That's what you do got to know. Do you record your own music or like you say, you go to the studio? Oh, yeah. I, I go to the studio. I write, I write my own music. <laughs> you write so, your own. But... I, like I, I memorize all my songs before I go to the studio. Like I don't use no phone, I don't use no notepad or nothing. I go to the studio with my with my head and my feet. Would you say you want to learn to record your uh? Oh yourself? yeah, for sure. That's a that's cause like usually whenever I get in the studio, I go, but I don't like waiting on people. Like if I want to record the song right now, have that mug mixed today. Like I want to get it done, so I'm gonna eventually have to learn how to do that myself. Oh yeah, that's what's up. What's your process of creating a song? Uh, process of creating the song so i hear a beat and it's probably weird this is probably the weirdest way but shoot it worked for me i i hear a beat and like i just i feel it like instantly it, as soon as i hear a beat i know if i'm gonna like it and i know if i'm gonna, if i'm gonna want to rap on it so i hear it and i get the rhythm you feel me if i want the rhythm and then i get i get the flow before i even put words on it i get the flow of how i want it how how i'm gonna ride this beat out so once I get a flow, then I start putting words in the flow. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. it, it kind of do make sense. Everybody got their way of how they create a song. So, do you rap about real life situations and why? Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like it's rarely any cap in my shit. Like for it's rarely any cap in my shit. Like I probably say one or two things like i ain't deal bro like not all that shit gonna be real bro yeah no it can't be <laughs> like, it, it can't be like bro that. not people be like bro people it really think that like i feel like it's a, it's an art like it's just all about putting something together though like, right it's about get what do people want to hear music is entertainment yeah it's you entertainment. gotta give people what they want to hear like 
the, honestly, bro, if you don't do none of the shit you rapping about, but your music fire and niggas fuck with you, you doing your job. You getting money. I, I can't judge that nigga. You can't. <laughs> like, it's, it's a lot of people that made it already that ain't did nothing that they talking about in their rap. But I they made it. Right. I can't judge that nigga. He getting off. What you mean? How am I head on that nigga? Because he getting money and he probably rapping my story better than me. <laughs> like, nah, for real. I can't help it, bro. Do you believe it's best to rap about real life situations? Yeah, I do. Because sometimes if you rapping something that you really not about, you can get in situations that you're not ready for. Yeah, yeah, nah, for real, like, I feel like, like you said, rapping about violence or saying you'll kill somebody, like, somebody gonna come test you, somebody gonna come see if you really about that, like, right. I feel like that energy do come back on you, like, and that's, that's the thing that's dangerous with rap now, like, right. that rap energy come back on you. Right now. It is. For real. I feel like it, it is definitely the most dangerous job, and I feel like people just want to kill artists, like. For real, like, for, it's a reward or it's something. It's a reward, they doing it like it's a reward behind it, man, so. It's a dangerous job for sure. See, I feel like, I feel like really coming in rapping now, nah, you gotta mentally be like, just ready for all that negativity and drama that's just gonna come with it. Like you gotta already mentally be prepared for that shit. Nah, that's facts. Sure. Have you ever been in trouble with the law? Nah, I mean, one time, when I, I got in one altercation under the college, but. Other than that, nothing for real. Nah. <laughs> These niggas back there laughing and shit. Lock him up. <laughs> What's some struggles you had to overcome doing music? Some struggles I had to overcome doing music? Shoot, feeling like... Alright, so when I when I dropped my first song, Run On It, a lot of people in this city know that song because that shit blew the fuck up as soon as I dropped that bitch. Like, mm -hmm. But uh, Run On It... Um, I, it started off real good and that was a blessing and a curse for me because it put my expectations way too high it put my expectations way too high like my first couple songs put my expectations way too high because i started off real good thought all i had to do was make a couple good songs i was gonna blow i wasn't really ready to put in the work for that shit you was and, expecting every song to do that yeah and it, it disappoints you when like everyone don't do what it with the first couple songs did right and so when i started to drop my views started to drop you feel me and and two I, and two i was really scary like i was scary like i was starting to get people man i remember one time i walked into a basketball game a shores basketball game i walk in the whole student section started cheering i said oh, man what the hell i'm talking about i started sweating <laughs> like i wasn't ready for that and now i feel like i'm i'm older and mature like, right. i'm ready i'm ready for for everything that come with it i'm ready for it that and like just feeling like that I don't get the support I get, but sometimes I I do have a good support system, but sometimes I feel like that I'm, I'm, I'm slept on. But see me, a lot of people tell me I'm just overly ambitious. Like I want it not. Mm -hmm. I'm impatient. I want I want it not. I'm the same way. You feel me? But so I had to really teach myself that it's it take time. It ain't gonna happen overnight. No, it's it. not gonna happen overnight. Like you just gotta grind, be consistent, and it it'll, it'll come. It's definitely that. It's definitely some of the hardest things. Uh, what would you say the worst part about doing music? People act different towards you. <coughs> like I didn't. It was some. It was some people that I would like. I would talk to. You feel me? Don't say nothing when they see me in public. I feel like people maybe think. I think I'm like too good or something. I don't know. Like people just start look like pe you just start peeping different energies. Mm -hmm. Like it, it be weird. I don't like that at all. Like, I want people to still, you feel me? View you for you, right? Isn't but it? I ain't even, I ain't even a big that big of an artist yet. But I already peeped the little, the little shit. And this is it. Definitely, it's gonna get worse. The bigger you get, it's gonna get worse. People gonna get to acting different, changing. Uh, like you said, that it's gonna be like that. What advice would you give to somebody who want to do music? Determination and faith. If you don't believe you gon you if you don't believe you gonna make it, you're not gonna make it. I promise you. It's gonna be days you wanna quit, you can't. It's gonna be days you gotta do shit you don't wanna do, you gotta do it. Days you don't feel like going to the studio. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. You feel me? Like this really is more mental than anything. And that's what I'm gonna tell you. Once you beat your mental, 
you gonna win. And if you got the talent, you work for it. It's all about mindset, you would say. It's yeah. all about your mindset. And do you feel it's important to have cover art for your music? As like promoting and marketing. Yeah, I do, but I don't. I don't do it because <laughs> I don't know how to make none of that shit. So I literally take a picture and post that bitch as a song. Like I really, I think it is important, and I probably need to start doing it. But I, I don't do it. Yeah. So I right. mean, I do think it's important. <laughs> so eventually, I'm gonna start doing. It. I think once you find somebody who really can can do it and uh right. probably in a, in a nice price range, I know you probably are just like, all right, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start fucking with it. I'm right. gonna start doing the cover art. So. I feel like it's a, it's definitely an important part of marketing. It, it, it grabs people's attention, you know. Yeah, and I feel like that's the only thing I lack at with this music shit. Like I don't know how to market, bro. It's gonna come in due time, though. You you still gotta learn a lot of things, research a lot of things, research how to get on uh, blogs and all of that. So, but you you definitely making the right move. You being consistent. You uploading. You you giving people an interview on, on how to get to know you. So. It's gonna all go out. It's on. It's gonna all get out there. Um, I would say. Um, I feel like my advice to to somebody who's doing music is, don't hold on to music. I I, I hear drop that, that time shit. and time. You just drop just that drop shit. That like shit. nobody knows you right now. <laughs> you gotta throw it out there. The only way I say hold on to music is if you're putting it together for an album. Right. But other than that, I be dropping it because the goal is to get my name out there right. first, get big, and then when I got some fans. Yeah, I might hold on to it for a little while and, and let them let them want it. But yeah, hey, that's my advice. I feel like drop the music, man. Like, for sure. Drop it. Let them get out there. Let let, let them see shit. it. I'm talking about yeah. That's a big one. Um, do you prefer to build your own channel with your music? Definitely, definitely. I remember you told me that like at the beginning, build your own channel. You gonna want to build your own channel, cause like I don't want my fan base to be dependent on on another nigga channel exactly. you know what i mean i'm gonna build my own fan base like i feel like that is really important because you could get this many views on his channel but if you made a channel right now and dropped it on your own channel you would get yeah, like 90 percent less views like you know what i mean it's like starting over it's like starting over so i would say too that's an advice that i would say to somebody just making music make your own channel and post on your own channel you yeah know what I mean? You, Post on your own channel. You're right. And uh, that's how I feel like I know I want the best for artists. Like I already know I built my channel, but I be I always tell artists, build your own channel. I don't mind building your own channel. I don't mind letting you drop videos on your own channel because I feel like that's just it. I, I tell artists the only way to if you're gonna start your own channel is if you're gonna be consistent. Right. Like, don't start your channel and drop a video every three, four, five, six months because you're not gonna build your channel. It's not gonna build. But that's I get that advice to every artist. Like start your channel if you're gonna be consistent. You and feel it's, me? it's gonna make you more proud of yourself because once you see, dang, I didn't hit five hundred subscribers. Dang, I didn't hit. Dang, I didn't. I didn't drop feel? twelve videos this year. You I didn't. Me? I didn't shot twelve videos. Nah, no, I'm getting comments on my own channel. Like right. it, it's a good feeling. So I do tell them. Have you ever thought about quitting music? What I have, man, I can't even lie a couple times. Like, I just, it'd be stressing me out because I want it so bad. You want something so bad and you grind it. I didn't did so much. I didn't change my life around for this shit to make, to put this shit in place to where when my time come, I'm going to be ready. Like, I did shit I didn't want to do. You feel me? Like, it's spend money on shit i really don't want to spend it on taking risks getting scammed getting Hell so yeah. like it's so much a lot come with it uh, that come with it i, think I thought about yeah I, yeah i definitely thought about quitting but i feel like i got i'm too far i'm too far in to just give up and i'm not gonna live a life of regret like i don't i'm not gonna be 30 years old and wonder dang what if i would have did i give it a shot at least did i go hard with it or? right like and, and and i'm gonna go my hardest because i don't ever want to wonder like if I didn't try, if I would have tried hard, if I would have pushed hard, I would have made it. You feel me? I'm not going to, I'm not, that's a depressing life. I want to know if I fail, I want to know I tried everything I could and it just won for me. Like, exactly. Like, when you say sacrifice and all that, because I, I did, I think I heard you tell me, like, I switched jobs before so I could pay for music videos. Man. Like, you you sacrificed them and probably went to a job you probably didn't even really want to go to, but. Factory was my biggest phobia i'm telling you because i didn't see my mama my mama didn't beat a body down working at factories like almost all life so i seen what it do to people you feel me but my mama was working like 12 hours a day seven days a week for like a long time so i could see how her body like that but 
like still like I I just had a phobia of factories because what I seen what it did to my mama, and I was like, bro, I don't want to go to a factory, but I, I had to I had to do that so I can so I can get the funds that I need to pro provide for this music shit. That's a big sacrifice for sure. That's a big sacrifice. Um, do you do you, did you ever think you'll be this far doing music? I think that I, I think I want to get far. <laughs> I think I think that where I'm at right now, I'm, I'm I'm good. But I want more. I'm hungry. Like I want I want more. So yeah, I did think I was gonna get this far. I don't know if that sounds cocky or not. But. Nah, that don't sound. <laughs> That's how you supposed to think. What would you say you'd be doing if it wasn't for music? In school. I be in school, shoot, like, that was really, like, in school, though, like, that ain't, I mean, go to school, obviously, I'm not encouraging people to not go to school, but just where I, what I want in my life, mm -hmm. school can't provide me, like, school can't provide me, like, I know you can go to school and get good paying jobs, but I love music, you feel me, and I want to make money for music, so I know what I gotta do, and school just not gonna get me there. Exactly. So, and that's that's how it is. It's just sometimes it ain't the route for what you want to do. Yeah. And you gotta accept that. You gotta take the risk, and you know, okay, I gotta go a different route. So. Shoot, I probably music didn't pull me out of depression. Like a lot of times when I'd be down and in my head, and I write a song, and I swear I feel better. Like I got a song called Depression right now. I was really like I was depressed, and I wrote that song. Feel me? Dropped a couple tears. And I was straight. Like, felt I felt good after that. Yeah. Felt like you let something out. Like, and it feel good because when I dropped the song, a lot of people was like, "Bro, like I mess with that song. Like, I'm going through stuff too. I'm going through something too." Like I, I had a girl. She texted me. She was like, "I'm in the MCC parking lot right now, like crying, listening to this song. Like it, it make you feel good that you can uh, touch people like that. With, yeah, with your words. They can relate to your music. Yeah. I think that's the best way to, to to reach fans for real. Do you get a lot of hate or a lot of love? I feel like I get both. I get both. People, man, like this one nigga. <laughs> this one nigga, he he had he had posted some. It was like this shit, this shit fire on mute or some, and it had some people was sharing it or some, like saying that my music was trash and stuff. Like, and I ain't even that big an artist. Like, I ain't think I get the hate that I have gotten. Yeah. But I also I also get a lot of love though. Like I get I I definitely I, it ain't even equal. I get more love than I get. Hate. I get more love than I get hate for sure. Nah, that, and that's that's, I and that's, but it, when you got people definitely like putting their input on it, it lets you know like I'm doing something right though. People watching. People watching, cause you ain't finna comment uh, or take your time out to do that on somebody who ain't doing that. What's your favorite video you shot? Damn, hold on. I would say either Wild West just dropped two days ago. Go fuck with that. Uh, Lulu, Lululemon, Wild West, Urban and Beast, mm. right now. Mm. But it's some it's some shit on the way though. Like y'all ain't it's it, it's gonna be it's gonna be some crazy shit. Uh, you say Lululemon, Wild Wild West, or Ben and Beast? Yeah. Do you have a least favorite song or video that you that you probably like? Man, I just I don't, I don't know. I just ain't end up liking it. You know. Maybe everybody else liked it, but that was your least favorite song or something. <laughs> like, you know, everybody, everybody just really got a song that they probably hold on, don't hold on, like. Hold on, real quick. I'm, I know I'm a, I'm a just a least favorite. I got to look at one that's like going crazy. Uh, <laughs> piss me off. I don't know. I got some songs that I feel like shoulda went mo crazy. Like Honey's in my denim. Y'all gotta fuck with that. Honey's in my denim is slept on as hell. <laughs> but I don't know if I got a song that I don't necessarily like. I got songs that I listen to by me more than others. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I really can't think of one. Like I really say it if I didn't really like that song too much. But any song I don't like, I don't drop it or I don't even record it. So. Oh yeah. Have you had songs where you just you you just I ain't dropping that like nah I don't even like it honey. Yeah, I wrote a song. I wrote a song and I was like 
17. I don't even remember how it went, but I wrapped it. I said, man, it's trash. I bought it up, threw that mug away. I, I ain't even played a beat no more. I, it, yeah. You said, all right. <laughs> I know it be like that though You be like damn I don't even like this I ain't never dropping this Yeah I'm usually Usually like When I say something When I put it down on the paper I'm confident in, in What message I'm trying to get off and, and what it's going What it's saying So like I ain't If I ain't confident enough To put it down on that paper I ain't gonna write it down So usually when I'm done with a song I think That's what's up That's what's up Have uh, music open any doors for you? Not yet. Not really. Like, nah. Not for real. Not yet, you would say. It's on the way, though. What kind of year did you have 2021 with music? 2021. So, I actually, 2021, I didn't even drop. I, uh, I had took some time off of music for a while, but I came back, like, August of 2021. That's when I dropped my first music video. And, uh... From August to December, I think I racked up like 5,000 views and like 8,000 watch minutes or 10,000 watch minutes, something like that. I can't remember, but it was it was straight for like only doing it half the year and coming out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. like I ain't drop a music. I ain't drop music for almost two years, like a year and a half. I ain't drop music and I came out of nowhere and to do that for half the year, I mean, I'm mean, straight. Yeah, no, you gotta feel pretty good about that. You took a, you took years off, or a year off, and then came back and started dropping, and you still getting traction to your channel, so yeah. you definitely gotta feel proud about that. Like, yeah, like I sure. said, it's all about starting small, and then ain't no telling where it's gonna go. Right. Um, so, what can we expect from you in the rest of 2022? Shit, music, music, videos, videos, music, music, videos, videos. I'm telling you, I'm dropping. Like it's on the way. I like I got shit in the vault. I got shit I'm making. The shit I'm making right now is okay. it's coming. Mm -hmm. Music video. Like I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get a mixtape out, but I just feel like I ain't got quite enough buzz yet. I need to get a little bit more buzz before I go dropping tapes. But music, music videos, videos, and whenever I get that buzz, that tape coming too. And I feel like that's the way to do it too. Like, give me. I gotta give me where I wanna be. Or at least give me some to what I feel like I need to drop that tape. Right. I feel like you're doing that right. Have you dropped the album or a mixtape yet? Nope. But I had one ready for like two years. I had I had a mixtape ready when I was 16, bankrupt to bankrupt, and then I'm I'm working on a little little smaller mixtape. Like bankrupt to bankrupt got like 18, 20 some songs on it, mm. and I'm working on this little smaller mixtape. It's probably gonna have like 10 songs on it, but it's like on all, all songs that I'm writing now. Like Bankroll to Bankroll got songs I write now or songs I wrote when I was sixteen. Songs like I got songs everywhere. But this smaller mixtape, I don't even know what I'm gonna name it yet. But it got it's gonna have all songs by me right now. So y'all gonna see where I'm at with my skill level on music right now. But I don't know when that's coming up, so so you say call it bankrupt to bankrupt. Bankrupt to bankrupt, yep. That's and you gonna... just sound like I mean like trying to go from bankrupt to bankrupt. That's yeah. probably the meaning behind it. That whole message behind that tape is chasing a dream. And you buy the songs on that tape. Like it's a fire tape. But the songs on that tape you can get you get that feeling. Like you like greatness is on that tape. Oh yeah. Literally and lyrically. That's what's that's what's up. I know it's a lot of people who I can't wait to hear it. I know it's definitely people on your channel that support it for sure. Um, so where you see yourself in five years from now? Where I see myself, I'm gonna be 100% honest. I see myself with money, with somewhere not here, with a big house, probably a nice car, one or two. I ain't gonna do too much. <laughs> but, but shit, like, I, I see myself being great. You feel me? Like, music is, is not stopping for me. Like, this shit is not gonna stop. So, who really, who or what can stop me? Like, that's a good way of thinking for sure that's a good way of thinking and I, like i said i think another thing too like study like i said i always tell artists study music videos study um you know just how study artists what they do how far they came they they, they music video channels i study all of that and i'm just a videographer so that's what i tell artists and when you get down you know go watch your, your favorite artist's youtube channel and just see like how far they came and and, and stuff they had to overcome documentaries and and stuff so i would that's that's my advice to any artist to 
study try to spend less time on you know social media and just not really using your time like i, I go to youtube or i just study artists like study their instagrams if they uploading pictures if they uploading videos they uploading uh, studio sessions you got to do what they do at least what the successful people do right you got to do what they do so I, that's what i tell artists like um, yeah. what's your favorite artist to work with have you worked with any artists i only worked with three and really really none of them is really like big name artists even in the city yet but uh i don't know i i will i will work with artists for sure but i know i ain't worked i ain't worked with really no no household city names yet and nothing like that local names no like you said, you still, you just now coming back being consistent with it. So right. I know you like, oh, that's going to come in due time. Yeah, for sure. What frustrates you with some artists? I feel like the love don't be, don't be there. I feel like people trying to compete with each other. I mean, that should be ass. Like, we from the same city. I feel like we should be competing with niggas from other cities. You feel me? Like, we, like, we Muskegon, you feel me? So I feel like you from, like, you from my city, like, I'm going to fuck with you because you from my city, like, that's just that's just what I what I imagined that it would be like, but it ain't that. Like niggas competing with with other niggas, and I trying feel like to tear each other down. Yeah, I feel like it's really trying to see who can make it first, or who can make it first, and who can catch the most eyes, and who can be that nigga. You know what I mean? Like, and that shit just weak as hell to me. No, it is. Instead of trying to let's all get together and we trying to like how Detroit came together finally, and they on top. Not like I don't. The that's city. What it take. The city don't understand that they want to take each other down, say who the best, this and that. It ain't gonna that never get no media, Social media is poison. It is. It's, it's definitely poison, man. So, I agree. Um, who are some of your favorite local artists? Some of my favorite local artists. All right, I'm finna. All right, I love. Let me see. I like. I don't know if y'all heard. I fuck with Rocket Man. Shout out Rocket Man. He cool as hell. I fuck with Dolo Tufo. Hey, he nice as hell. He really, he talented as hell. BP, Mari. Fuck with BP. Shit. I know it's, I know it's some other niggas out there. Lede, I fuck with Lede. Trey put me on Lede. Shit, yeah, he nice as hell. Who's some of your favorite industry artists you listen to? Let's see, I fuck with. I fuck with YB. Young boy for sure. Fuck with baby, both of them, the baby and little baby. Fuck with Dirk, Polo G, no cap. Yeah, it sound like all you know all the yeah. hottest artists that's in the game right, right now. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, that's what's up. I listen to YB for sure. I, I probably listen to him a lot. Yeah. Um, same type, you know, Polo G. Uh, I listen to I, I I gotta say though, I listen to a lot of Detroit music though. I really I'm I'm on the Detroit wave like I don't know just you know payroll. Peasy, hey, that's hot right now though. Peasy. I fuck, oh yeah, I fuck with Peasy. Cause all of them came up like just seeing how Detroit on top now like they was overlooked. Really, I fuck with really all the Detroit artists. I, I literally I listen to. I would say I listen to more Detroit artists than actual industry big industry artists. So, right. would you rather sign a deal or stay independent? It depends on what type of deal. I ain't trying to get screwed up. I ain't trying to be no slave. So really, I think the goal is to stay independent. Probably that's probably everybody goal. You want to make that money by yourself without having to go through nobody, worry about nobody, nobody taking a cut. So, right. but the thing about staying independent, you're doing all the work yourself. So you got to be ready to work. You got to be ready to work. Put that money behind yourself, and uh, really believe in it. Like you said, a lot of artists ain't willing to put that money behind themselves. So a lot come with being independent. People do make make it sound like signing deals is, is the bad, but some people in distribution deals and it ain't got to be a major deal. Right. You know, it could be a lot of them with Empire, you know, Empire signed a lot of Detroit artists, uh, mainstream artists. So I feel like it is some small deals out there, too. That's just not even bad, but it is, you know, a lot of people don't want to get screwed in deals. Sometimes I heard Gotti say, like, as long as it makes sense, if it makes sense, then go with it. But if it don't, OK, stay independent. But if you make it independent, you definitely blessed. Like if you build your own independent buzz and don't need that label, that's that's a blessing for sure. What's the best advice somebody had given you? My mama told me I can't I can't live a life of regret. I think about that every time. Every time I think about you know me quitting music, not doing music or 
anything in life like you don't want to live a life of regret so you got to do what you want to do what you love doing how you love doing it and and screw anybody who got something to say about it don't like it you feel me it's your life y'all are not gonna die together you come in this world by yourself you die by yourself so you don't like don't live a life of regret i say that's the that's the best advice anybody ever got to me, gave to me I, I get a lot of advice though that's a hard question because i it's a couple things that i want to say to the to that answer but but yeah don't live a life in regret i agree um uh, I can't. I can't even really think of the best advice because I didn't been giving so much advice. Right, that feel? was a hard question for me. That's probably not even the best piece of advice I heard, but I, that's the first thing that came to my head. Uh, I'm gonna think of something after this interview. I just said. That I shit. think the best advice I got is life goes on. Yeah. Life goes on. You after hitting some hard times or you know whatever be happening to you in life, I just know this life gonna go on. It's gonna keep spinning. No matter what happened, what what goes on, so you got to keep moving and get through life, like, period, like, that's that's probably the best piece of advice, and that 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 got me through a lot of things. Life goes on, you feel me? You gonna lose a lot of things, you gonna lose a lot of people, you gonna things gonna change. Nothing stays the same. So, I probably agree. That's that's the best part piece of advice I got. Um, so, what's some social sites that you own that people can follow you on? Facebook. At F O E J B. Uh, Instagram. And J B is J A Y B, is not the letter J B. It's J A Y space B. Um, Instagram, J B, J. <laughs> I think it's J and it's J A Y underscore B or something like that. Yeah, it's J A Y underscore B 2002. Yeah, that's what it is. J A Y underscore B 2002. Instagram. Uh, and my YouTube at, at JB, you feel me? It's a bigger artist named JB right now. You feel me? He like some Korean nigga. <laughs> but so if you look up JB, he gonna come up. You gotta look up one of my songs or go to my any of my socials. I got the link to my channel in there. If, if you can't find my my channel, so yeah, and that's how you know. I like I, I just remember your uh, half your your Instagram name, but that's cause like I know that you've been rocking with me, you've been supporting, and I, I pay attention to that. Definitely certain artists, I pay attention to that. So. Um, yeah, definitely. It was a nice interview. We're going to have another interview probably years from now and see, you know, where you at then. And, yeah. and hopefully we both on new, new levels and, and stuff like that. I appreciate you for taking the time to do this interview with me. Um, like you said, go check out the, the new videos. He got a bunch of new videos out um, and he's that he's dropping. You know, we dropped Lou Lemon, uh, Ben of Beast. Um, it's, it's just been it's been a great run like and we just we just getting started so we trying to definitely fly out of town next or, or drive out of town and try to go do some different videos yes, and sir. and stuff and who knows like i said we're gonna start doing different things man we we may try to put a story video together you just never know what's gonna come um but you definitely on the right path i can say man you're on the right path you you chasing your dream you ain't living with regret you 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 standing behind yourself and believing in yourself a lot of artists ain't really doing that man and you ain't i never see you tearing down artists to to try to get on and try to step on somebody's feet so i can definitely say you move in the right way you got to keep going keep believing um like i said i remember starting at, at the beginning too like it's just like you said you just it's just a process right. it's a process so um you got your family supporting you i noticed that you got your friends supporting you your girl supporting you so you got every reason to keep going it's sure. people that ain't got nobody supporting them i'm talking about nobody they got to really train themselves to to think positive and all that so yeah, yeah. um keep doing your thing man keep being positive we're gonna do another interview hopefully a year or two from now and we, like you said money on me some chains <laughs> y'all hear me hey but no I, i'm y'all gonna be seeing more of me for sure that's what's up man so go to these channels uh jb channel you can go to sbk productions channel um that's SBK and then Slash Productions. He got a couple videos on there. So go check all that out and uh, leave comments, drop a comment, drop a like on it. And uh, hopefully we, we on new levels a couple years from now. So. Yes, sir. All right. We out.